Alright, alright. Greetings, my fellow mushy of Earth Dirt. My name's Hans, Lord of the Jungle Plants, Father of Dragons, obsessed with two bricks, and Berserk for Legos. Today I'm going to show you one of the most technically challenging Lego mechanizations I've ever done. My design of a Lego escalator using the new escalator links. So lace up your shoelaces, because this situation's about to escalate. Onwards to the origin story. Alright, and the origin story starts with my Craft Emporium, or the expansion of Lego Grand Emporium. This is actually part of my Creator Expert Modular Building expansions, where I take modular buildings and I expand them to the full size of the faceplate. So if you haven't seen the video on my Grand Emporium, definitely go check it out. It's five stories tall, and four of those floors have working escalators. It's got a plant store, it's got a pottery store, it's got an art store, banana bread bakery, it's got an art gallery. And I'm also building them for my LEGO City, Paradisa City, a tropical city set in the future in the year 2060. So all my buildings for Paradisa City are very tropical, and I have a little bit of futuristic tech implemented into them. I just started putting Paradisa City together, and if you like LEGO Cities, then I would definitely recommend to go check out the video premiere of Paradisa City. Click on the link up there. And right when I decided to build this, LEGO came out with an all-new part the escalator link, which was introduced in the LEGO set 41450 Heart Lake Shopping Mall with an actual working escalator. I knew right away I had to use those new escalator links to create a working escalator in my expansion of the Grand Emporium. All right, and since I'm doing this as a tutorial video, first thing I'll do is I'll show you how to build a main floor, then I'll show you how to build the escalator itself. I'll briefly go over the last floor, and then last I'll show you what you need to do for the motor and the gears that run this whole thing. Now, when I first got those escalator links, I knew there was going to be a few challenges because I wanted to have flat floor transitions as well as a minimal gap from when they step off the floor onto the escalator. And the other challenge I knew I was gonna have was running a pair of escalators, one going up and one going down on each floor, as well as the motorization from floor to floor to floor. I knew that was gonna be a challenge. What I didn't expect to be a major challenge was the escalator itself. And the fact that I had to completely redesign how this escalator flows around. And so when I set about to build this escalator, I was going to use the sprocket that the escalator links were originally designed for. And what I quickly realized was that the sprocket is so large that it makes this escalator really, really bulky, and I mean really bulky. And since I wanted the escalator to stack one on top of it, each other on the floor, I needed clearance for the minifigure to stand on the escalator without hitting his head on the escalator from the floor above. And so when I built my very first prototype of the escalator using the sprocket, there was just no way that was going to happen, unless I made each floor really, really tall. So in my tutorial, I'm going to show you just how I made this escalator to run without that large sprocket and keep it as compact as possible. All right, and here are the new escalator links. They're pretty neat. This is the first time LEGO's ever made a working escalator piece. And so I'm a sucker for functionality. I love it when things, you know, move or, or function and stuff like that. So I was pretty stoked when I first saw these escalator links in the Heart Lake Shopping Mall set. However, as soon as I got them, they have some good characteristics to them, but there were a lot of cons to, to implementing this in just a regular minifigure building. And one feature that they have is that little fin, which is what holds the minifigures, the mini dolls and the minifigures. However, I didn't like this fin, especially with it being so tall and so square, because when the escalator is coming up from below the floor, right, this escalator is moving at a 45 degree angle, you actually have to add an extra gap in there in order so that these fins don't hit the floor. And that's no fun, because then you end up with this really large gap, and then the minifigures kind of have to jump across about one stud width of a gap. I think what would have helped is if they chamfered that fin at a 45 degree angle. That would have allowed us to get the floor right up close as the escalator is either passing down or coming up. And here is the sprocket, and as you can see, the sprocket is pretty big. So as the escalator wraps around this sprocket, this takes up a lot of room, a lot, a lot of room. So, and the other thing to keep in mind too, is that if you, when you build the escalator itself, you can build it in a traditional stacking of the bricks in a studs on top format. But when you go to install it into the building itself, it's at a 45 degree angle. So when you build it like this, maybe it's only like six, five or six bricks tall, but when you go to install it like this, at a 45 degree angle, that vertical measurement suddenly grows from, say, six bricks tall to nine bricks tall. And so nine bricks tall, I mean, that's that's the height of, a, of each a single floor in itself. 
It definitely doesn't work with these gears. Obviously the, the gear teeth. And the other thing too, is that even with this gear, the escalator was too thick and bulky. And even still, I had to make each floor two bricks taller compared to the original Green Emporium, just to accommodate even my most compact escalator design. Now I'm a mechanical design engineer and designing new Lego pieces on CAD is something that I can do. I can at least get the design 95% there uh, without having to coordinate with the manufacturing engineers of the injection molding processes. Obviously that's where the last tweaks of the designs come in. And so looking at this, I think they really just wanted to make this a little bit more robust, maybe because the age group was younger. But looking at it, I really think they could have used this style of linkages, the same as the chain and the, the tracks, so that it works with these gears. One thing that I think I could have done is reduce the thickness of this bar, just right in the very middle, not where it snaps in here and here, but like in the very center, so that it's the same thickness that's used on these chain links, just so that it can work with this gear. And then of course it would connect to the gear here, and then what I would also do is add a, a rib in there to catch another gear tooth. And the spacing between this hinge point and this hinge point is almost the same as two of these linkages. Uh, the other thing I think I would have done was just to kind of make this a little bit more compact or try to get this kind of moved up or to get these hinge points kind of tucked up as much as possible into the, uh, the step itself. Now these escalators move at a 45 degree angles and the width of the step is dictated by the foot size of the minifigure. And so therefore, because it's a 45 degree angle, it also dictates the height of each step. So that doesn't really change. All right, and since this is a tutorial, I'll first show you how to build a floor that can accommodate an escalator and has ramps coming from the floor below, as well as ramps leading up the escalator, as well as the drive shaft that runs from floor to floor. Then I'll show you how to build the escalator itself and how it pops into the floor. And then really briefly, I'll just show you the slight difference of when it's the last and final floor, which only has the railing from the escalator below. And then I'll show you the gearing mechanism. So give me a moment as I tear this all apart so I can rebuild it right in front of you. All right, let's begin. And of course, as with any building, you're gonna start with the floor itself. And so the dimensions of the opening for the escalator itself is going to be seven studs by 19 studs. And so I added a couple of colors here, you know, so eight, 16, and then plus three extra studs. And then over here, I'm just showing a six plus one equals seven. Now the minimum size for an escalator going this way is gonna be 32 studs. I guess you could do 31 studs and make this side like one stud shorter, but. And since the opening is 19 studs, that comes out to be six studs left over on this side and seven studs left over on that side. So since I've got the escalator up against the back wall, I've only got one stud in thickness. For whoever is building this, you don't have to build it up against the wall, you can build it in the very center of the floor. Although that would be kind of a poor use of space if you're building on a 32 by 32, because these escalators obviously take up a big chunk of the floor. So if you got a building that's bigger this way than 32 studs, by all means, put your escalator in the middle of the floor if you want. All right, so let's put it all together. So this is the floor for the back wall and it is 19 studs long. I'm using two 1x12s on the bottom here and I'm using a 1x12, a 1x3, and a 1x4. So we'll attach it to the left side here, which is seven studs wide using a one by eight and a six by eight. And then we'll go ahead and kind of extend our floor off into the rest of the building. Now, another thing to note is I built this to be eight studs here, though it is offset by one stud there. So now let's add the right side. And this is a six by eight plate. And we'll add another plate in there. And you're gonna want this to be only six studs wide again, because we're doing something interesting over here. If you want, you can even build this as a longer plate. It could be a six by 16 or whatever. So now let's build the floor right in front of the escalator. So here I'm using a 2x16, but this could be a 16x16, an 8x16, whatever you want. But I decided to use this narrow piece, 2x16, simply because it gives me better visibility to show how the escalator was running. But all in all, I'm pretending that this is a 8x16 plate. So now we're left with two studs and a gap right there. I and mean, that's for the drive line. We need to have a 1x1 notch right there. So here is how we're going to make that notch. So here I'm using a 4x4 plate along with a 2x2 angle plate. And then I've got a 2x2 angle plate right there at the top. So we'll attach it right there on the bottom. So here you can see the driveline notch is offset by one stud from the right side. And of course, we'll fill up the rest of the floor with more plates. And since I tore the tiles apart to do that, so go ahead and create whatever tile pattern you want, but just make sure that you leave all of these untiled that you see here. So now we'll go ahead and add the plates and tiles that hold the railing for the escalator itself. So uh, this is for the escalator. And we're gonna need a one by two plate to attach the railing right there. We're gonna do the one by two plates over here as well. And just for fun, I decided to add a little bit of arrows to indicate the direction of the escalators. All right, and for this side, I'm using a tan plate because this stud will be exposed. And then on this side, I'm using a one by one plate and then over here for the railing, I'm using a one by three, a one by four, and then a two by two angle plate, like so. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the part of the floor that the bitty figures walk across to step onto the escalator. And it's gonna have the notch that's designed to avoid this fin right there. So we've got a one by two angle bracket right there. And for this side, we've got a one by one angle bracket. All right, and for the top the left and right corners, we're gonna do a little sub assembly. So we've got a one by two angle bracket like so. And we've got a two by two plate with the one by two wall element. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a couple of one by two plates to the top of that. And then we go ahead and attach it right there. So for the other corner, we're gonna do the same thing. Like so. And this time we're gonna do a couple of one by fours and we're gonna do a two by two angle plate. And we're gonna attach it over here. So now we gotta finish uh, these two bottom pieces. So we're gonna flip it over and go to the bottom. All right, so we got a one by one angle bracket going up along with a one by one plate. And then we're gonna put it right there underneath the, the one we did from the top. Now for this side, we've got an upwards uh, one by two angle bracket with a one by two plate on there. So now you can see I've got four studs there. I've got two studs here. So again, we got the two by two with the wall element and we'll go ahead and attach it there. And same thing over here. And there you have it. So now the floor is not gonna sit uh, nice on the table. You've now got these uh, pieces protruding from the bottom. So what I like to do is I'll offset the floor by three breaks tall. That helps when the escalator actually sits below the floor. When you go to set your building down, the weight of the floor doesn't sit on the, the escalator. And these are just temporary, just as you're kind of constructing this. So now let's finish the middle part. All right, so I've got a one by two angle bracket going up with the two by two uh, right there. And then on top of that, I've got a one by two plate. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna attach a one by three and it's gonna be going to the left. Now what I've got is I got a headlight brick. I've got a one by one wall corner and I'll attach it like that. I've got this one by two angle tile with the corner notched off. So I'll go ahead and attach it to the top of the headlight brick. And what we'll do is we'll attach it over here. And the one by three actually just kind of helps support it so it doesn't get pushed down very easily. And now what we're gonna do is the opposite of this. So here we go, but now the one by three is off to the right. And this is built in the mirror image. So the headlight brick, but now with the wall element facing that way, and then this guy is going off in this direction. And so we'll attach those two right there. And then one thing I'm doing differently is I'm adding another one of these angle brackets, but this time it's the one by two with the, with the two by two uh, going down, and then I'm just attaching it that way. And this just acts as a, a spacer because what they're gonna do is they're gonna sit just like that. And this spacer just kind of helps keep things aligned. So you're gonna build uh, two pairs of these, one for the left side and one for the right side. And let's go ahead and attach these. So we'll start with uh, this guy first. And he goes right there. Then we're gonna add this guy over here. And so now you can see those little notches right there, these notches. And that's what helps clear the fins as the escalator links go uh, through the floor. So we'll do the same thing for the other side. And we'll attach those like that. And there we go, done. All right, so let's do the rails. So one thing to note is I've got two that are regular sized and one that is uh, stunted short. So we'll start with the regular size one and it's only four studs long. So one by four here on the bottom. The important thing to note is it's critical to have this one by two roof slope right there. And of course I'm using a bow slope with some plates in there and I got a tile on the very top to finish it off. And we'll do the second one right there. That's gonna be the middle guy. And then for the, the front one, I'm doing it one stud shorter. So it's only three studs long. I've got a one by two here and I got a one by two going off to the side here. Of course I've got my one by two roof slope right there. So I'm gonna attach it right there. And remember how I said that stud was gonna be exposed? And then this guide right here just kind of helps secure it because over here it's only attached by one stud. So we're gonna hide this with a flower pot. Uh, we've got some plants right there. Now for the rails on the right side. So again, we got one that's shorter than the other two. So we'll start with start with the standard ones. Uh, this is five studs along here. I've got an inverted one by two roof slope. And then for the top part of the rail, I'm using a one by three jumper plate to offset this by a half of a plate. So there you go. We'll go ahead and attach that. And we'll attach the middle one. And then of course this guy is stunted short. So it's only four studs on the bottom, but everything else is pretty much the same. Bunch of plates stacked up in there. And he goes on right here. 
And let's go ahead and add some railing so many figures don't fall down in there. And of course you can use any kind of rails that you want. It can look like glass, it can be, you know, fences like that or whatever. Cool. Two days later. All right, so now I'm gonna build the walls going up around. And of course they're just generic bricks. You can build them however you want. And of course the walls are gonna continue off and you know, do whatever you're building, wherever your walls are gonna go. So now we're just gonna drop some bricks along the back wall. And of course we've gotta make room for these two spots, but I just got a bunch of bricks. I'll just kind of pop them in there. Like so. And let's add on the left side corner. And I decided I'm gonna add some windows. So we'll pop some windows in there. And that's why this part of the wall is only six studs long. And I'm only making the windows six studs wide because right here in the very middle is where the escalator is going up. So that whole part of the wall is gonna be blocked. There's no point in having windows there. And then you wanna have eight studs of a gap right there. And we'll do the right side. You know, again, it's just gonna be a bunch of bricks, whatever you have on hand, that's handy. And you don't need to have windows. You can just make it a solid built wall, but you need to have this opening right here. So 12 studs from the corner, you need to have a two stud opening. And that is for the Technic brick to mount into. And then eight studs wide. You would have. The dimensions of this particular escalator pretty much dictate the height of the floor. So it can't be any shorter, it can't be any taller. It just works out exactly due to the angle and, and all that stuff. So at this height, it is eight bricks tall. There's gonna be a ninth layer of bricks, and then there's gonna be a plates, and then there's gonna be tiles. And then overall, the thickness is gonna be exactly 10 bricks tall. So we'll go ahead and add the ninth layer like so and so here is the ninth layer of bricks then there's the plate and then of course there's the tile for the next floor up above it now these two studs right here are going to be the second mounting point for the escalator so you've got your first one down here this will be your second one so you only want to build bricks up to the 19th a stud location and then you can add a one by six right here and then right here at this position the fourth stud from the right corner is going to be part of the framework for the drive shaft mechanism that goes from floor to floor so we'll put on the seventh brick right there and then we can also put on a one by three right there and we'll add a couple more plates and tiles. So when I get ready to install the escalator, I'll show you how to quickly disassemble just this middle section right here to pop in the escalator. But now let's go ahead and I'll show you how to build the drive shaft. All right, so for the drive shaft, we're using a Technic axle that is 12 studs long. And it's actually just a, a wee bit shorter than the stack of 10 bricks. And that actually works out kind of nicely because when you stack the next floor on top, the drive shaft is gonna also engage with the drive shaft of the floor below. And when it does, it only slips in by a half of a Technic beam length. So it's just enough so that it engages, but enough so that it's also easy to stack the floors and pull the floors apart without ripping apart your drive shaft. Sometimes what happens is that if this gets stuck in a little too far, it may pull this off of the floor from below. And on the very bottom, I'm using a one stud long bushing right there. So if you recall, we left that little notch right there and that's for the drive shaft. So the drive shaft is actually gonna go right down through here. And that's how it engages with the floor below it. So let's go ahead and get that started. So what I got is a one by one brick with a Technic hole. I've also got two plates on the very bottom. And then I got this Technic connector. I don't remember what it's called. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing. So we got those two. And that's what's gonna be what holds the, uh, the axle going through down at the very bottom. So we're gonna snap that in over here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a support column that helps support this structure up here. Originally, all I had was just the drive shaft that went uh, down through the floor and I didn't have a support column, but in my earlier designs, it became a little bit more concerned because of how much friction the electric motor is having to overcome. And I didn't want the weight of all the floors to be causing a lot of friction on the drive shaft itself. And so that's why I decided to add later on a support column. So we'll start with two one by one bricks and we're gonna add this half arch brick right here, which is two studs tall. I'm adding a little cheese wedge slope right there, and then I've got two one by two bricks. And the reason why I have to offset it right here is because of the worm gear. The worm gear is kind of right beside it, so I needed to make room for it. So we'll add that right to here. Now this part right here becomes part of the railing right there, so I decided to decorate it with a flower pot. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a cantilever structure. So I got one by three, and I got a one by four. I'm gonna use a two by three brick. And now I'm gonna add this part right here, and it consists of a one by 10 brick, a two by two corner brick, and it's got two by six. But we need to add a few more things to the very bottom of it, and it's gonna be the top part that holds the drive line. So I'll start with these two Technic bricks with a Technic pin, and we'll snap them together like so. And then I'm gonna add this Technic beam, which is only three long, and has the pin hole on top and the axle holes on either end. And in order to connect it, I'm gonna use the three long axle pin here. I'm gonna add a bushing, and then pop that in there. 
and then right there. And so the red axle, the drive line is gonna go right through to there. So we'll get this guy back up here and connect that. And then this guy right here, I'm gonna go there. And I'm gonna add this guy right there. Now we can go ahead and snap that in there. And let's make sure that these work column is snapped in place. Now, this little spot right here is really important. It needs to have that clearance right there. You can't add more bricks and plates uh, beyond this point because at that point, it would start to interfere with the connections down here, which is part of the on-ramp, off-ramp flooring for the escalator. All right, so let's finalize this with the plates and tiles on top. And before we do that, I noticed I got this in the wrong spot. So we're just gonna move that one by six over by one stud right there. So we got our one by eight right there. We got a one by eight tile right there. We got our connection to the next floor going on. One by four, one by sixes right there. And we got the rest of the wall going off in that direction. We got one by eight, another one by eight, one by six, and another one by six right there. All right, now time for the drive line. So the bushing is gonna be on the bottom and it's gonna be offset by a half a bushing. It needs to go in through the bottom. So we'll just kind of slip it up through there. All right, and so now we're gonna cover up the drive line with these two bricks tall uh, connectors. Okay, and we'll need two of them. So as I'm stacking them, I'm pushing the drive line axle up through. And the next is the worm gear. So we'll slip that on. And now the last thing to go is the rounded connector that's only one beam long. So we'll push the axle all the way up through. And now the axle connector is the last one to go on. And you wanna push up on the red axle uh, pretty firmly. This should seat all the way down onto the red axle. And that's how I designed the whole floor structure and the driveline mechanism for the escalator on each floor. Now, when it comes to adding the final floor, obviously you don't need these details because this goes up to the next floor. So there won't be a next floor on the final floor. So all you need to do is to do the same thing there, but just on the right side. So your opening doesn't have to be the full 19 studs. It only has to be 11 studs right up to where this railing is. Um, and that is just enough for the headroom for the minifigures. You could make it 12 studs as a nice even number. That's fine. And now I'm gonna show you guys how I designed and built the escalator. But first, I must disassemble. All right, so first thing to note is that each track takes 28 links. That's right, which is a total of 56 links per escalator or per floor. Each of these links is pretty expensive from Legos Bricks and Pieces. That makes this escalator very expensive and not, and definitely not going to be something that a lot of people are going to be doing. But nonetheless, I'm showing you guys how it's going to be built. And if you guys are undaunted by the cost, feel free to add escalators to your buildings. I definitely don't think I'm going to be adding any more escalators uh, to any of my buildings anytime soon. All right, so all 56 escalator links off to the side. All right, and to start off this build, we're going to start from the very bottom. So I've got a one by 10 here, and then flipping that over, I got a one by four here. And then what I've done is these two by sixes are staggered, like so. And now what I'll do is I will add a one by 16 right there, and it's gonna line up with this guy right there. And I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Now you wanna be careful because this is still kind of fragile and kind of tends to fall apart. The left and right sides are only connected by this uh, middle piece right there. So the escalator is seven studs wide, and that's because um, each escalator track is two studs wide and you need to have one stud in the very middle to separate the two escalator tracks. So now we'll add a one by eight brick in the very middle. Kind of clamp that down just a little bit better. Okay, and then for the right side, I've got a one by eight plate with a one by three brick on the end of it. So we'll add that right there. And then for the left side, I've got a one by six plate with a one by one brick and a one by two inverted slope. So we'll add that to the end right there. And I got some one by sixes to kind of stretch across there. Uh, just be careful because there's only attached by one stud at the moment. And then we'll fill in all these little spaces with more plates. So I got a one by two here. I got a one by three here. And one by four. So, and this is what I'm using for an offset spacer for the uh, gear mechanism. Uh, so it's a one and two thirds uh, brick tall with the two studs on the side of it, plus, one, uh, plus a one by one plate, plus a one by one round tile. And we're gonna add that right there. All right, so we're gonna set this up for the uh, gear mechanism. So I've got a one by one with a axle in it. And just be careful because uh, this plate is still kind of loose. Put that right in the middle. We'll do the same thing on the very end, right there. And then for the two spots in the middle, I'm just using a regular uh, one by one with a Techno hole. Although technically you could still use a one by one with axle hole in it. 
All right, so we're gonna add some more plates to the very center. And this is a one by 10 with a one by six on top. And uh, we've got the offset, so we'll just kind of build that together. And we're gonna attach it to the very center and we're gonna offset it by two studs at the end there. And on the bottom, we're gonna add this uh, one by three inverted slope right there. And it's gonna hang over by one stud. Now we're gonna do something similar to the left and right sides. So I've got a one by 12 with a one by three on the bottom and I've got the opposite with a one by three on the top. So I'll snap those two together. I'm gonna make two of those. And snap it on like so. And you've got two studs on either end left over. And for each of the four corners, I've got the one by two Technic brick with the two pinholes in it. Now it's time for me to unveil my trade secret for how I was able to not use the large sprocket. You can imagine this sprocket right here, the escalator would just be super chunky. Okay, so I start with this little axle connector here, and I'm using a too long little red axle, and what I've got is a candlestick. And I'll put one on the other side, and here I've got a one by Technic brick with an axle hole. Cut that. And we're going to slide in there. And it's actually going to set into the inner ridge of the uh, Technic brick where the pinhole is. Now for the top of the escalator, and just a quick reminder, this is the bottom of the escalator. This little corner notch right here is to avoid the drive shaft, and then all the other corners are squared off. So for the top of the escalator, we're going to do the same thing but slightly different. I got the same Technic brick with the axle hole, and then I'm using this uh, axle connector. And then this is going to go up like that, but we're going to leave a little bit of a gap. We're going to leave about a half a plate gap in there. And then we will position that, open the, the bricks up just a little bit in order to get the, the candlesticks seated into that. And there you have it. And so the escalator links just roll right around. There is no gearing, there is no sprockets. The escalator links literally just slide and glide through this entire mechanism. So let's go ahead and add the escalator links. So we're going to start with the end that has the clip on it, not the end with the bar. And then starting from the top of the escalator, we're going to slide it on through. And there's that. So I've got this one by four and it's the one with only two studs on top at each end. So we're gonna put that guy right in there. And then we'll go ahead and snap that down. Now I still have to be really careful because this is still a really fragile setup. It's actually best to hold it on the very middle, kind of keep the clamp down on that. And so that leads us to the next step, which is connecting the left and right sides together to the very center frame. So a lot more of these one by four plates with the two studs on each end. And we're gonna do it every four studs or with a two stud gap in there. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And it's just offset by one stud. And next we're gonna use these uh, two by two plates with two studs on one side and we'll fill in the, all the gaps. All right, and now these little gaps in there that are uh, just one by one plates. And you can probably skip these because of the fact that uh, this whole system is kind of stitched together from the left and right sides and really connected just by the centerpiece. I like to have as many stud connections, as much grip power as, as possible so that it's a little more solid. Cool. And what you see here is this is what the escalator track runs across the top and it just slides and glides and it's the same thing here. You know, in the very beginning when I was building the escalator and trying to come up with 
ways to make this as compact as possible. You know, obviously the first thing I tried was like, you know, just regular gears. And, you know, we quickly realized that regular gears aren't gonna work at all. So my next experiment was, okay, can this thing, how well can this thing turn back on itself and roll and glide? And it turns out that it does quite well, actually. In some of my earlier iterations, I was just using a simple uh, Lego bar. Now, the tighter that this thing has to kind of roll back on itself, the more clunky or jerky it is when it's going around the corner. I found that this to be the right size. This was the last thing I tried, the candlestick. I also had tried a Technic axle. I also tried a Technic axle with the with the, these guys on it. But these guys ended up being a little too thick. And when it came to how it interacted with the floor up top, it caused it too many issues. So now let's go ahead and build basically the handrails. All right, so let's go ahead and put on the first rail. This is the center rail. And what I've got here is a one by 12 with a one by two to make 14. And I'm using some one by two uh, slopes. I've got the one by 16 here with a one by one. And I'm using two of the one by eight tiles with a one by two. So we'll snap that on there. Just gotta be really careful. Things don't burst apart on you. So now that this uh, center build is kind of clamping the, the left and right sides together, and it's a little lot more stronger now. So let's go ahead and snap these links together. Like that. So again, it's 28 links per, per track. And here you can see just how nicely it glides. No sprocket needed. Yeah. How awesome is that? Oh my god, this could be like an ASMR right here. Go to sleep, people. Go to sleep. Cool. And as you can see from the bottom, a set of plates helps prevent it from sagging down below. It also helps keep it engaged. But I couldn't do the plating too far because um, these linkages obviously need room to roll around. And so if I were to make the plates go further, they would end up restricting it just so much. It wouldn't work. And then these fins right here would start snagged on these plates. So these plates right here are offset by uh, four studs. And then over here is where I've got my fancy mechanism for running both escalators. All right, so let's do the handrail on the left and right sides. It's pretty simple for the right side. Uh, it's two 1x16 plates stacked on top of each other. I've got a 1x2 inverted slope. I've got my tiles on top. And then I've got my pair of slopes right there. And it just snaps on right there. So now it's starting to feel a lot more solid. All right, so this guy is obviously different because this is where the escalator is going to attach to the walls through these two uh, locations. I start off with a one by three, and then I've got my pair of Technic bricks right there. So one with a hole, one with a pin, and I'm using tan to match with the color of the wall right there. So it's gonna go on the bottom. And then I've got a one by eight here, although you can see I'm just using two one by fours, but a one by eight. And same thing here, but this time it is two of the white ones to match with the color of the wall. And you want the brick with the pin on it to be on the outside. So that way nobody can see the technical. All right, so we're nearly complete. Now all we gotta do is add the gears that runs this thing. Let's begin. All right, so this little uh, Technic doodad, whatever, it's a, I use this on my garbage truck too, but I think it's more like, more like a, the steering column differential where you got a 90 degree, 290 degree gears. And then I've got an axle that is uh, six long and we'll plug that in like that. And now a three long axle with a stop on it and we'll kind of get that ready right there. And this is what I'm using to power both the escalators at the same time. And then we're using this, this small black gear right there. All right. So pushed in the axle and we're all set. We're all good to go. So remember those um, one by one bricks with the Technic axle holes in there? Uh, so this will slide into there. So actually I'm gonna remove uh, this guy real quick. And I'm gonna slide this in there. I chose black bricks and that was hard to see. All right, so it didn't go in all the way, so I just realized I did something uh, wrong in the very, very beginning. So I'm gonna take this guy off real quick. I'm gonna take off these two plates. And this brick actually needs to move one spot over. If you rewind back to the beginning, this brick will actually stick out beyond this guy by one, by one stud. So we'll pop this stuff back on. And put this guy back on there. This guy is really important because it really helps tie in the bottom. Uh, the, only two, the only two layers that are holding uh, the whole structure together is this gray, dark gray layer and then these plates right here. And because both this one and this one are only connecting to the center and not to the far opposite side, these, uh, this plate and the bricks aligned in the center are basically connecting both the left and right sides. All right, so now I can push this guy in further and then that, that's what I'm using for my stop. And then I just realized I got this one in upside down. So actually the gear is on top and the, the forward lever uh, gear cog, whatever you want to call it. All right, so there's the axle right there. 
and there's the axle hole right there, and just slide it in. So now when you rotate this, it moves this one in one direction and the other one in the opposite direction. There are some kind of flaws to this. This is still the best system that I've come up with. I can't think of anything that would be any better. So there is a slight flaw where sometimes this four-pronged cog will kind of get caught up against the side right there and it doesn't want to roll around. Now, when I first thought of this idea in order to power both of them, actually, a lot of my ideas were like, oh, I should probably drive something down through the middle here or to create some sort of gearing system. And there was a lot of times where I just thought I was never ever going to be able to even motorize or, or power this up in any way or form. And I was just like, well, it's just gonna have to be, it's gonna be like this, you know, it's just gonna slide. And it'll just be there for, you know, it kind of functions. With some perseverance, I was able to think, okay, but what if I use this guy and it would just kind of rotate and do that. This was my breakthrough discovery in being able to use a single input and be able to power both of them going in the opposite directions at the same time. Before I was just like, okay, you know, like I'm gonna have to have something coming in and rotating this one and then it's gonna have to somehow reverse. It's, you know, I'll have to do some fancy gearing to reverse it just to get to the other one. When the idea hit me to try this in the very center and then I ended up upgrading it to this one because sometimes this one would slip over the top of these linkages and these wouldn't rotate. All right, so let's go ahead and put this guy back like so. All right, so we're almost done. So the last thing to do is to get the gear train that runs this. Now before, I wasn't using this little black gear. I was using the next size up. It was sitting here on the bottom. This guy was actually one position forward. So if you watch my escalator video, I actually have it different than this. I had a different system. And instead of this little gear, I was using the next gear size up. This position was one step forward. And then when you put it inside the building, the gear mechanism, there was a series of three to four gears. Uh, I'll just use this as an example. And then what it was doing is that the gears were engaging at a 45 degree angle. So in my Grand Emporium video, it's that older mechanism design. And then when I wanted to do the tutorial for this, I began to notice that there was that slight problem with this, the four prong cog gear getting jammed up on the side of the, of the escalator links. And it was starting to happen more and more often. And I was like, I can't do a tutorial video uh, with that issue still existing. And that's what inspired me to move this back one side, but then it completely changed the way I had to gear it. And that's when I went with a worm gear. So it's actually a much simpler setup. Although there is one issue with the worm gear and we'll get to that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a pair of these. I've got a one by three plate on top. I've got this one by two plate with the Technic hole off to one side. And then I'm just using the inverted O slope one by two right there. And I've got two. And I'm gonna mount it two studs back. And then I'm gonna set this side for a moment. All right, so here's an axle that is eight long and I've got the worm gear. And I've got a bushing and a half on both sides. So I'll go ahead and slip that in there. And now we'll go ahead and attach this side. Okay, and then because this has the inverted slope notch right there, it's now only offset by one stud. So whereas on this side, it was two studs. Okay, and then last but not least, this little tiny gear right here. All right, so the issue with the worm gears is that the gear ratio is really, really slow. And when I first did this, I was still using the bigger gear. Over here, I was using this smaller black gear right there. And because this is also being run by a worm gear. So the, the worm gears have a really low gear ratio. And it's even, I think it's even worse than this. I don't know what the actual ratio is, but this worm gear has to spin many, many, many times just to get a single revolution on whatever gear it's connecting to. And so that slows down the whole system. It really slows it all down. And since I've got two worm gears, one on the drive shaft and one here on the escalator itself, it just, it slowed this down so slow that you almost couldn't even see it moving. And I had the electric motor going at like full blast. I was like, no, and that's it, we're done. That's the escalator. So let's go ahead and uh, drop it in the building. So here's what I like to do, this one by 16 brick. Tug on it, wiggle it free, set that aside. This guy right here just pops right off. And I've got my escalator. And what I'll do is I'll attach. Let's turn this around. Yeah. All right, so obviously we gotta attach the bottom in first. Oh, we got a tree in the way. All right, so slip that down in there. And you can see here, we'll just snap that down. Okay, now we'll take that wall panel that we had and we'll go ahead and drop that in place. Boom, all right. And then now we gotta snap this Technic pin brick in place, but because we're not dropping it directly down on top, it kind of has to angle itself on. You kind of have to push it this way or rotate it in place. Cool, yeah. And then we'll just pop this back on top. So there's our escalator going up. See it from both windows. Bada boom, bada bang. There it is. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you, but if I turn this guy, the escalator's moving, but you can't really see it moving because it's just moving so slow. So let's add the final floor to the top of this. And one thing you want to do is make note of the orientation. So I always like to check it and then or position the cross axle, you know, in line with the sides. 
And then do the same thing for this floor. Make sure that uh, this is right there. Now, one thing to note is that because this is the final floor without the escalator, it doesn't have the worm gear. And one thing to note on the drive shaft is that there's that little gap right there. And that actually is perfect spacing for a half of a bushing. And originally I had the half bushing, but I decided to leave it out because when things get stacked on and all the weight, sometimes these things will sag. And with the stack up of all these pieces right here, uh, when there's a bunch of weight on it, it creates more friction. The more escalators that you're trying to run, the more torque and the more friction, it, the harder the motor has to work and it begins to struggle. All right, so we'll snap this guy on top. Oh, that's where that last one went. Okay, so now the drive shaft is fully engaged. You can see I'm spinning it up here and you can see that it's rotating down there. Okay, and a couple things to note is here you can see where the inverted slope is and how it just avoids that right there. And the other thing to note is the how the escalator lines up with the rails up here at the top. Now one thing, I put a lot of effort into it, but I wasn't able to be successful. But I thought that if it was possible to put a minifigure on here at both the top and the bottom, and if you were to position their arms just right, that when they get to the top, if their arms could interact with the rails at the very top in such a way that it would just pull them off the escalator and then we just kind of like end up depositing the minifigures kind of like right up at the very top. That'd be kind of cool. It didn't work because the little fins grip their legs a little too tightly. And the other thing too is that with their minifigure arms, they would just kind of end up losing their balance and then falling over backwards. A lot of times they'll just fall over backwards and then all the way back down the escalator. Yay, no injuries, which is probably why I built the hospital first. Um, or they would fall forward on their face or it just wasn't enough strength to pull them off of the escalator and then it would just jam up the escalator. But here you can see that their arms clear the top of the rail and then they would just kind of end up like that. That was kind of the idea. And the same thing for the bottom. If I was to position their arms in a very particular fashion, that the same thing would happen down at the very bottom. I actually kind of think LEGO would have done an awesome win if they had tried to accomplish that, maybe through some specific design elements or something like that. Uh, that would have been pretty cool if they had been able to pull that off. All right, so let's um, let's talk about the gears. All right, so let me um, let me tear this apart and I'll show you how I built it. But this is basically the roof of your building. I think originally it would have been okay to use a crank, uh, just a hand crank to be able to run the escalators. But ever since I switched over to the warm gears, there's no way you can't spin your hand fast enough to, uh, to make the escalators run at a reasonable speed. I didn't even really complete this. And that's because you can build this gearing mechanism in numerous ways and anybody can do it however they want. There's no specific science or novelty way of doing this. So, all right, so let me uh, give me a moment, disassemble this, and then I will reassemble it. So just so, you know, people kind of figure out how I did it. All right, so this is just a partial section of the roof of the building and uh, however you want to build your building. But the main thing to note is that you need to have the hole for the axle for the drive shaft to go down through. And it is offset by seven studs and eight studs from the outer wall. And then of course, you know, most buildings have some sort of border trim at the very top of the building. So I just kind of added that. Uh, this is just a simple plates and floor plates uh, setup, just like how you see in LEGO modular buildings. All right, so I'm using a Technic beam to support the two gears that I'm running as well as the motor on top. In order to do that, I'm snapping the Technic beam down. So I got a 1x6 with a 1x3 plate on it, and then I've got a 2x6 plate with a 1x3 tile. And this tile helps with the axle that the motor is connected to. I'm gonna add a bunch of walls, so just build a wall structure uh, using whatever brick you have. Right there. And I've got the remaining walls right there. And I also had a 1x3 placed right there. I just realized I got this plate in the, in the wrong uh, spot, so it's actually going to be separated by two studs. So here is my 1x5 Technic Beam, and I'm using this four long axle with the, the stopper on the end of it. And I'm using the very large gear here. Then I'm also using this, I think this is a five long, but it's got a stopper and it's got a stopper about one brick long from the end of it. So I'll put that in the second to the last hole and we'll slip on this little gear. All right, so the gearing. Because I went with the double worm gears to run the escalator, those slowed down the escalator so much that I've now got to change the gearing uh, to really speed it up. So the motor is spinning really fast and then it's going to spin this large gear at the same rate as the motor, but then that large gear is going to spin this little gear much, much, much faster. The conundrum with gearing is that when you gear it to speed things up, you lose torque. You lose a lot of power in running it. And that's because even though the motor is applying a lot of force to spin this gear, the whole system, all these escalators, are also transmitting a force in the opposite direction. And then because the way torque works is that force times distance, um, this distance is really large. So the force coming from the escalators being applied to the gear here across this um, distance actually puts a lot of torque back on the motor itself. Even though we're using these large gears to speed up the escalators so that they run at a regular speed, uh, it makes it much harder for the motor to uh, run a lot of different floors. All right, so now we're just gonna snap this down on there. Okay, and if you can see that the Technic beam is snapped to the, the two plates. And spin that guy like that. And the gear is kind of showing down there. 
Now again, this is kind of a, a half half developed concept. It was just to basically convey that you need to have a big gear with a little gear. And you can use the slightly bigger gear with the thinner teeth, it's the light gray one, as well as the, the really small gear, and it'll speed up the escalator even more. But again, it requires even more power from the motor. All right, and then what I'm doing here is I'm using, I'm using a one by seven half beam uh, to kind of fit over the top of that, along with the two by two angle plates. And then for the motor itself, I'm using the pin and a half on one side. I'm using the half pin with the stud on it on the other side. And the reason I did that was because these are kind of sloppy and loose because they're designed to spin. I use this, which is a lot more rigid. So we'll just snap that down. There you go. That is my basic setup. As a mock or whatever I create, I would do a much better job of kind of making this look you know, as part of the building. But I only built this specifically for this tutorial and whatever building you guys are making, you'll make your own custom uh, mechanizations. All right, in order to add this guy, because the motor is already attached and you can't really spin the motor that whole easily, just take note of the position or angle of the axle here. Go ahead and make sure that this is aligned up the same way. And yeah, let's give it a test run. Yeah, see, the video figures, their feet hold onto the escalator pieces a little too strong. So another thing to note is that I chose uh, to have an open floor layout and that the escalator, you know, being fully exposed on each floor would be a nice aesthetic for the grand emporium that I built. But because of the fact that it's only mounted by two axle pins on one side, you know, it does kind of leave it a little bit wiggly, which can sometimes become a weakness and make it susceptible to jamming up. It would be better or stronger if there was a wall built on this side of it with two axle pins holding the, the right side as well. Let's see what happens. Let's see the bottom. And that is how I designed a very compact escalator. Now, the other thing that I forgot to mention is that when you get the next escalator up on top from the floor above, there isn't a lot of headroom. They just barely miss it. So you can't have many figures that have really tall hair pieces. They actually just kind of have to have very low profile hair pieces. Even with the floor being a total of 10 bricks total, this just barely is enough room for the minifigures to clear it. And as you saw from my tutorial, this is the most compact design that I think is pretty much feasible. I mean, literally the escalator links are like wrapped around and they're traveling across just a single row of tiles there and the bottom part of the escalator. As, I mean, even with this compact design, the escalator is still taking up about three bricks in one plate. And then this top layer right here is only just the handrail. It may not be easy or trivial to design a better piece, but as a mechanical design engineer, I still think it, it's doable. And I think the trade-off would have been, it would have been worth it, uh, especially to, you know, for all the LEGO fans. And then to lower the cost per piece on these pieces. I know that this particular piece has a lot of very complex geometry for the uh, plastic injection mold machines. Like the mold has to come apart in a bunch of different ways in order to create all these different cavities. And that's what really jacks up the price on these. But if they had designed this to be more compact and also have additional workable features, you know, like design it so that the minifigure can will automatically pop off or, or whatever. Even if it meant, you know, having, you know, designing a couple more elements, right? Cause I mean, if you think about the garage, the garage doors, the garage doors require four different element molds, right? So you've got 
the rail that runs horizontally. You've got the, the taller rail pieces, you've got the taller piece, and then you've also got the one by two piece. And then there's the two different molds for the, the garage doors itself. One is the bottom with the handle on it, and the other one is just the, the regular garage door handle. So long time coming. Building this was very, very frustrating. It pulled every bit of my patience and technical know-how to pull this off and a lot of things I thought I wasn't going to even be able to incorporate into this functionality but through a lot of perseverance over months and months of trying over and over and over different solutions only to find out that there's some tiny 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 nuance where it just would work sometimes but not all the time but all in all I'm pretty happy that I was able to pull off and accomplish a lot of it and get what I wanted to do so that being said I know I've been lacking on videos lately still building like crazy. I'm still building mocks uh, almost every day. Some of them for Parity of the City, some of them not. I've got some very exciting new projects that I'm working on that's gonna be coming up. Subscribe to my channel because uh, I've got a lot more highly technical and get notified on uh, future videos. This won't be the last of my highly technical design concepts. Also, uh, in partner with this escalator, I have got a tutorial video on how I designed a Lego elevator with very thin sliding glass doors. Definitely go check that out. And on that note, I'll catch you guys later. And then I've got this Technic beam, uh, which has the... And this needs to go in through the... And the last thing to go is the, uh, the half of... And then we'll just pop this back on top. All right, all right, all right.